So next part that we want to understand is basically the concept of tokenization. Now if you are from computer science background and you have done your basic compiler courses, you already know interpreters, uh, then it's something that you're already familiar with. Otherwise, uh, for all of you who are not from computer science background, uh, tokenization is basically nothing. Uh, tokenization is basically the, the what is, uh, to understand what is tokenization, let's first understand what are tokens. Tokens are nothing basically but the atomic elements of your text right so your text basically consists of uh, words and they, each of the words basically consists of characters so idea of token is basically that basic element that constitutes your text right so that could basically be at a sentence level so your text is composed of multiple sentences your tokens could be sentences uh, if you look at a slightly granular level your sentences are composed of words right so basically your entire text your entire text is basically nothing but a combination of lot of words and you can basically split your text into all of those words and if you are trying to look at it further down kind of further granular level it could also be tokens could be in terms of your characters right so tokens could be at different level it could be you could have tokens at sentence level you could have tokens at word level you could have tokens at uh, character level and you can also have tokens at sub character level uh, so there's, there's a lot of way you can kind of break this up so uh, basically anything that is uh, for your particular uh, task that is your current that you're currently doing you can basically choose the uh, granularity of token that you are looking at uh, so so that's that's the idea of tokenization so tokenization again kind of summarizing this for you so so you have your text like this right so So you could have tokens which are at word level. So if you're trying to tokenize, you're basically trying to separate into different words and so on and so forth. So when you're trying to do that, that's that's first kind of tokenization. Now you can do this same text and you can try and separate that into a set of tokens which are at the character level. So you're doing that, then your tokens are something look like this, right? So on and so forth, right? So that's so that's the understanding that we are trying to develop here is basically this this particular each of these elements are called token, right? So the basic constituting element of your text. Now you, that element could be at a word level, that could be at text level, so that could be a character level, it could also be something at sub-character level, and we'll probably come to that much later in the lecture. Uh, but for now, just understand this that token is basically nothing but trying to break this text into its component parts right and components could be in terms of words it could be in terms of character that's something you choose depending on the application you're trying to work on uh, and that's about it so just because in this particular example probably we'll just talk about tokens at the level of words that doesn't mean tokens are always at the level of words it could be also at the level of characters as well right so all of this this could also be the level of this could also be separate tokens that are broken into right so basically, as you can already have explained to you, tokenization is basically this unstructured data, right? Which is basically a free flowing text. You kind of take that text and you kind of structure, break it into its component elements. By breaking it into component elements, what you are doing? You are kind of taking that unstructured data and giving some structure such that that structure could be used for uh, some other analysis, right? For example, you might want to kind of number of tokens in this. So basically, say if you're trying to so think of it this way. So if it, you're trying to detect basically which author has written which particular article, right? And you tend to think that probably number of words that the author has used is basically representative of his writing style. So then you want to kind of look at number of tokens that is there in an entire text, right? Or probably number of tokens per each sentence that you're trying to look at. So if you're trying to look at something like those kind of features, right? If you're doing feature engineering and those are the features you're interested in, then you probably need to kind of uh, break your uh, look at tokens at the level of word, right? And so doing all of those all of those analysis that are there associated with uh, NLP, you kind of need to first break your text into sort of your tokens, right? And that's what tokenization is all about. So again, like in uh, you know, in a theoretical, in a real world, you would probably tend to think that text dot split, and then you pass your space character, right? If you ideally, basically, split by space, you should be able to get words. But that's not always the case because a lot of times you might have uh, other complexities also in this. As we had seen with full stop, 
uh, that's as in using a full stop is not the most efficient way of splitting sentences so is the case with tokenization if you're trying to do it at a word level if you're trying to split by just spaces that's not the most perfect way to go ahead with it fair enough so tokenization as i've already said said to you tokenization is basically segmenting a document into its atomic elements tokens tokens are generally split by space or punctuations yeah it could be split by punctuations as well right so typically tokens are words but again it's not necessary tokens could be at level of character as well sub character as well up to you and uh, sometimes you can treat punctuations as also tokens right so there's one way you can kind of where you're trying to split words by punctuation so you're saying that punctuation is basically a separator between two tokens sometimes you can also look at punctuation as a token in itself right so when you're looking at words as level of punk as level of tokens for your kind of task that you're doing you could look at punctuation to separate those tokens you can also look at punctuations as being token themselves also right so again this is a complex task so this is something that is not easy to kind of write and uh, do it all by yourself in python so that's why you can refer to nltk nltk has all of this figured out for you so first up so this is a very simple tokenization that we are using here which is called the regex token tokenizer and uh, you can see that when you pass this corresponding the article that we are looking at right that us justice break in and all of that right so when we looked at so we can clearly see this is uh, this is good right so you can see the words are being broken but there is a problem right the us justice is basically has been so u is a different token of where well, ideally it shouldn't have been the case right us should have been a single token and then department so there was an apostrophe s there but that kind of got separated into a different token so you just is department and then there's an s which is just in itself right so there is some part which is not extremely fine with us so let's now try and look at something uh, which is a little more advanced so um, obviously just kind of to keep in mind so that there's this there's this lot of the, lot of tokenizers are actually available on nltk and some of the better tokenizers like tree bank tokenizers would probably uh, you know are probably might be more effective for your solution but in this kind of case let's try and just see with what some something which is probably a slightly bit better than the one that we had used so this particular tokenization is the basic one which is basically the word tokenization and then if you do that you can clearly see that basically a break in right earlier in our in the first tokenizer a break in was considered break was a different token in was a different token and that was a problem right break in was a hyphenated word so it should have been basically one single word treated as one single word again us is basically was one single word that was earlier tokenized into u s and there were different tokens in this kind of case that's not happening it's basically the same token that we are using so those are some of the things that we kind of take away from all these lectures which is as of now is basically this that uh, tokenization is basically the concept of taking a sentence the text that you have and splitting that up into its constituent elements the constituent elements could be in terms of words it could be in terms of characters it could be in terms of anything uh, that is composed of uh, in this particular case we looked at tokenization in terms of word level and what we see here is basically there are multiple ways of tokenization and tokenization is not the most easiest task uh, there are different uh, sophisticated tokenizer as well as non sophisticated tokenizers available and we have seen how the result kind of differs from one sophisticated to one non sophisticated to a sophisticated tokenizer right so that's it so that's the concept about tokenizing right so basically now what you have done is you have first taken the text you split it into sentences now each of those sentences you basically have also split it into tokens now you have your entire text in terms of your in terms of your tokens right so now what we do is basically something which is called stop words so basically so there is this common words in english language right so which are basically a the a and him her is of and all of those words right which are basically not of much relevance to our particular assignment so you basically uh they don't convey a lot of meaning uh most of the times again this kind of goes with a disclaimer this is not this is not a universal rule that uh stop words are something that are always non relevant there are obviously some stop words right which are probably not not much of a context or meaning is associated with them and even if you remove those stop words you are not losing out on much of an information right 
सो दैट दैट्स द आइडिया दैट वी हैव फॉर स्टॉप वर्ड स्टॉप वर्ड्स आर बेसिकली दो स्कैन ऑफ वर्ड्स एंड वी कैन द आइडिया इज टू कैन ऑफ रिमूव देम फ्रॉम योर टेक्स बिफोर यू कैंड ऑफ डू एनी फर्दर प्री प्रोसेसिंग विद दैट राइट बिकॉज यू डोंट वॉन्ट टू कैंड ऑफ टेक इन टू कंसिडरेशन हाउ मेनी टाइम्स पीपल रोड इज राइट और पीपल रोड आर और वेर आर ऑल ऑफ दोज थिंग्स राइट so that's the understanding behind stop words so stop words are basically so this list is basically a kind of uh the ones that are there in the nltk corpus nltk library basically has all of this list for stop words in english the thing to notice this stop word list and kind of i'm always saying this this is not a fixed list this is not a list that is uh you know universally present across uh, all applications this is just a generic list of words which are probably stop words in case of a normal english language based data now in your particular case the kind of data set that you're working with you could have a lot of different kind of stop words right so if you're trying to work on say looking at research papers and trying to classify which machine learning topic it is for right whether it's a classification based paper or regression based paper so you're looking at the research paper which is a text data and trying to classify which is which is a kind of uh, Is it a classification or a regression kind of related paper? Now, in this kind of paper, anything that you words that you see around machine learning, any words that you see around training error, test error, these are all basically some things that are stop loss. They stop words, right? Because in this kind of context, there's if it, if it's a classification paper or a regression paper, you are basically going to use the words machine learning are going to be used in both of them. The words training, validation, error, and all of these are concepts which are fairly similar across both of them. So, even if you see uh text which basically has any any of these words they are basically irrelevant for the purpose of classification that we have at hand so just keep that in mind so stop words is a list which is defined for the uh kind of task that you are doing at hand so based on the kind of application that you have at hand you can have different kind of stop words added to this list right so this is just a list uh for very very this is just a list for uh, basic english based uh, stop words right which you already know before and have don't meaning depending on your use case you could probably reduce this list expand this list and whatever right so that's about it so how this currently works is basically so you have your filtered set met sentence which is your first sentence is basically the ones that is uh the tokens right and then you for every token you check whether it's not in the whether if it's there in the stop words if it's there you just remove it right that's the way it works and that's what we have here so we have the tokens first we what we have printed is this tokens and then when we what we are seeing is basically once you have removed the tokens now one thing to keep in mind here is this particular thing that this word capital a right which is basically the article a right so the article a is still there which is ideally shouldn't have been the case because a is also a stop word of sorts right So the reason why it is here is basically because of the fact that we are it's look it's a capital A and it's not a it, it's when you look at this right So one thing to kind of keep in mind is this fact that this capital letter A, right, which is basically a stop word, is also here present here, right. When you have removed, when you have tried, so this second list is basically the list after you have removed the stop words. The problem here is because this capital A is a capital, it's written in capital, right. So that's why it did not get removed, uh, because as you can clearly see in list of stop words, there's this particular stop word which is A, which is basically the article A, right. It should basically there's nothing that conveys. you don't can't make anything when you're trying to use that particular article right so that's why you should definitely that's a stop word and it should probably be removed right but in this particular case as you can clearly see it has not been removed and the fact is because this is a capital a right whereas the stop word that we have seen in the list is basically a small a so that's why it's always advisable when you kind of do your pre processing the first step before you do any of this sentence splitting you tokenization stop word removal before you do any of this you start off with first loading your text data right so the first part of the data is basically when you do the first initial thing uh, is basically first take your text lower it basically when you say, when i say lower basically convert all your caps uh, upper case ca characters into lower case characters when you do you convert everything into lower case then only do the rest of the things 
right so that's about it so as i have already explained so more often than not stop words are removed from building models uh, sometimes you use stop words also as features right as i said stop words is something which is extremely uh, these are these are just suggestive steps right everything that we have talked right now and everything we have done in machine learning these are just suggestive steps at the end of the day depending on the application you're using you may not want to remove stop words or you might just want to use the number of stop words used as also as features right log on to gray atoms learning platform to unlock more free content subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon for regular updates